Hey everyone, welcome back to Code of the Row. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a druid that can shapeshift into multiple forms using the ACF sample template. This is a Patreon request and let's go ahead and get started. So for this, so I'll be using this Poly Art Bear by Malbear's Animations. Uh, you can do this with whatever animals you want. This one already comes with a set of animations that is going to be useful for my ABPs. So I'll go ahead and add this to my project that I named Druid. And I'm just going to go into the Poly Art Bear folder and start making its animation blueprint. So in my poly art bear, I am just going to start by creating an ACF character. So I'm going to right click, select blueprint class and drop down this all classes menu and look for ACF full player BP. And it's going to be a child of this. And I'm just going to call this ACF underscore ACF underscore bear. And I'm going to double click to open this up. And once that blueprint editor is open, the first thing I want to do is just go ahead and change this mesh. And I'm going to change this to one of the bears that we got from that animation pack. So in this case, I'll do a polar bear and I want to move it back just to line up with this capsule collision to determine its hitbox. And you can also play around with the radius and so on and the height. And now you're going to see that it's not going to be animating because it's still using that ACF humanoid, but it doesn't really work with this. So I need to create its own anim class. So in order to do that, I'm just going to go back, right click, and I'm going to go back to blueprint class. I'm going to search for the ACF simple template AVP and create a child of this. And we're going to select a bear skeleton, but I'll just call this AVP or bear underscore AVP. Double click to open this and select that bear skeleton. Click OK. And I'll launch this up. And the first thing I'm going to do is just go to my IK drop down and just uncheck this and click apply. And I'll just edit the defaults by just editing the details up here. So what I need to do is just assign some move sets and I'm just going to create one. Oops. I'm just going to click this plus sign to add one of my move set layers in the array. And I would just want to just, I'm going to use the tag name move set. And for the move set, I need to create, I need to create a quadruped move set. So now what I'm going to do is go back to my ultimate map and right next to this, go to blueprint class and look for quadruped. So there is already an ACF quadruped base moveset that I can select. And I'll just call this bear underscore quadruped. And now I'm just going to create a couple blend spaces in here. So I'll select the bear skeleton. And when I open this up, it's going to tell me to just fill it in with my jump animations and blend spaces and so on. So for the jump, I can just select one of the, the bear jumps. And as for the movement blend space, in the idle blend space, I'll have to create those. So I'll keep this one pretty simple and you can edit this to however you want. But for the movement, I am just going to go back to my ultimate map, right click, and then under animation, I'll create a blend space using the bear skeleton. And I'll just call this bear movement underscore BS for blend space. And then I'll create another one, but this is going to be a 1D for the idle. So I'll go to animation. Legacy blend space 1D, choose the bear skeleton, and I'll just call this bear idle underscore BS. So now for the bear movement, I'm just going to look for that run animation. So the run forward, and I'll just, I'll just drag this into the middle and I'll hit save. And now when I go back and open that bear idle, I'll look for the idle animation and just drag this somewhere in the middle so that it's just idling. And now I'm going to go back to the bear ABP and then select that quadruped move set, the bear quadruped, hit compile, save. And then in the bear quadruped, I need to select those blend spaces. So this is the bear movement BS. And for the idle, it's going to be the bear idle blend space. And for the idle, it does require a, the using the blend space 1D. So now let's try this out by going to our ACF bear and changing our anim class to the bear AVP. And if I were to just drag this onto the selected game mode and use it as my default pawn class, I'll hit play and you'll see that it lets me play as the bear. So I can move around, but you'll see that the animation is a little weird because it's running around. And in order to fix that, we're just going to enable root motion. So I am going to go to the animations. And it looks like there are already root motions, so maybe I just selected the wrong one for my for my run animation. So I will look for that. So now I'll go back to the movement blend space, and just in case this is happening to you, 
So just make sure it's using the run forward from the root motion folder if you're using the Malburst animation. So now let me try this out. Still happening. So let me force lock this root motion. So when I go to the animation, I'll double click to open this up and look for root motion and enable root motion and force root lock. So now, now it's fine. Now it's perfectly fine. And there are weapons showing and we don't want the weapons showing for the bear. So what we're gonna do in order to fix that, we're just gonna go to the equipment and inventory comp and next to available equipment slot, we're just gonna delete everything. And for the starting items, I'll delete everything as well. And I'll hit compile. And now when I hit play, the camera's a little close, but it works. And when I left click, it's playing the wrong attack animation and it, my face gets really messed up. So we're gonna just create an action set for the bear and fix that. And in order to do that, in order to do that, we're just gonna head back to our bear ACF character, go to the actions component. And it says ACF bear with all these movement actions that are already defaulted because we created a child of ACF full player BP, but our character is not a humanoid. So I'm just gonna delete all these move, move set actions delete this action set. And now I want to create a couple montages for attack animations. So luckily these poly art bears or Malbear's animations comes with some attack animations. So I'm just going to look for attack. So I'll do attack. So I'll look for a claw right and claw left. So I'll use these two. So I'll just select both of them, right click, create an anim montage. And I'll create them separately, but I actually want to create just one. So I'll just open this up, use the asset browser and look for claw underscore right and drag this in. And now what I want to do is add some notifies. So it tells our bear, so it tells our ascent combat framework, which action we're using. And in order to do that, I want to, I want to create some notifies by adding another track. And I'll just right click here in the action in the notify I want to use is an ACF action substate and this is under notify state. So I'll add one here for the duration of the claw attack. So something like from here to here. And then I want to copy paste this for the right arm as well. And it'll paste wherever your mouse is. So you can just do that. And then I also want to add a ACF notify exit action at the end of these. So I'll have one here and after this. And I wanna create another montage section. So I'll just call this combo 01. And under the montage sections, I will just leave it as this, or you can actually separate these. So if you remove the link, it'll play this and then this, or it'll just go into the next combo. So I'll just leave this from default going to combo one and hit save. And now I'll go back to my map go back to my poly art bear folder where I'm creating all my ABPs and stuff. I'm just going to right click and select action set. So I'm going to call this bear underscore AS to create an action set. And then under actions, there's nothing set up yet. So I just want to add a simple attack. So in order to do that, we need to use that bear attack montage. And since I gave it a weird name, it's going to be a little bit harder to find. So I'm just going to call this bear underscore attack. And then under the bear AS, I'm going to look for that bear attack. And for the action type, I want to use the ACF or I want to use the action. So this will be the ACF attack action BP. And for the tag name, I'm just going to use the attack action. And now I'm going to open up this actions and make sure that it's not using any stamina. I don't want it to use any stamina in this case. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the action cost. And for the damage to activate, I'm just going to change it to physical damage. So I compile and save. And now we want to go back to our ACF bear and we need to sell up. We need to set up some collisions for this bear. So we're going to go over to our collisions tab by going over to this ACF collisions manager comp. And we're going to add a couple traces. So you'll see by default, there already is a right fist and left fist. So we can just leave that as is. But I want my start socket and end socket to be called something different because we're not going to have pistol and spell on our bear. So I'll just call this um, R start and R end for right for the right side and then L end or L start and L end for the left hand. So I'll leave the trails on and we're going to determine where these start and end. 
So I'm just going to click on my bear and double click the skeletal mesh asset to open this up. And now I just want to add some, some start and end. So I can either do it through the, from the hand or the finger. I think in this case, I'll do it on the finger because it's at the very end. So under my L finger zero, I'm just going to right click and add a socket. And this will be called L start. And then I'll create another one called L end. So L start, I'll move to up here to the tip of this, the longest nail. And then L end will be the very back of this hand. Maybe a little more just in case, just like that. And then for the right, I'll look for the right finger, right click, add a socket. And this will be called R start. And let me just double check because it is um, case sensitive. So let's see if my start is capital. So when I go over to my collisions manager, R start is capital. Okay, so I put the right hand stuff capitalized. So R and then capital S. So that does matter. So that's good. And then I will add another socket and call this R end. And I'll just try to line it up the same way. It doesn't have to be completely perfect just yet. Just enough to wherever your bear attacks or where the claw attacks. And then I'll hit control save and that seems good to go. And now I need to assign this bear on action set to my ACF bear by going over to the ACF actions comp and setting it as the action set. So I'll just select the bear action set. So now when I use my bear and attack, it'll activate those claws. So let's go ahead and try it out. So when my bear attacks, he's using his claw. You can see the trace turn on and it will go to the other one. And we should also try this on a, on an enemy AI and I'll move the camera back because this video is just too good. So first I will just set this camera back a bit, probably angle it down a tiny bit. Okay. Probably a lot, a lot more. So this is fine. And then when I drag in an ACF, let's do a melee enemy. I need to make sure that I take damage and he takes damage. So I'll go ahead and swipe him. There you go. And now he has to hit me. Go ahead. Hello. So let me try it with an ACF defender. I think in the new sample project for 5.4, um, the actions aren't actually set up properly for the ACF melee. I've seen a lot of people have this issue. I covered it in another video. There we go. So that one works. Okay, that one's good, that one's good. And if you need to adjust stats for your bear, such as having more stamina and so on compared to your regular character, then you can just adjust it via the stat component and ACF statistics component over here. And if you're using a level system, it's a little bit easier because the level curve can determine the strength and stuff. And you can just add a set amount of strength to your bear that you'll get when you transform into the bear or HP and so on. So now what I need to do is just make sure that our character can turn into the bear and vice versa at any given time. So I'm going to go over to my ACF ultimate character or my ACF ultimate player BP, and I'll just look for it and double click to open the blueprint class. And now I need to set up some sort of runtime retargeter and I'll just create a function down here and I'll call this shape shift to bear. And now in order for us to shape shift to a bear, I basically just need to destroy my actor, unequip everything, and then spawn the bear. So in order for us to do that, let's go ahead and... So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to call a for each loop. And now I need to create an array using the game tag slot to get every item that our character has equipped right now. So I'm just going to drag out the loop body and look for an unequip item by slot. And the item slot will be connected to this array element like so. And we'll promote this to a variable. It's currently called array, but I'll just call this um, equipment in array. And now I'll hit compile. And in this array, we're going to add every single slot that our character is using. So if you were to go back to the equipment and inventory component, you'll see all these slots that need to be added in the array. So I'll go back to over here, highlight over this and just add a few. So in this case, I'll just add three and one will be the melee weapon. One will be the ranged weapon and one will be the left hand weapon because these are currently the ones that show in the ACF sample. And now once that's done looping, so once all of this is unequipped and once this is completed, we're gonna destroy the character. And I'll set the lifespan something like 0 0.01, just so it kind of instantly goes away. If you set it to zero, it just stays there. It doesn't actually go away. And then after our character is destroyed, I'm gonna spawn an actor from a class. And in this case, it's gonna be that, that bear class we created. So ACF bear. And then the spawn transform, I'm just going to get actor transform. And basically the bear that we spawn, I just want to possess it. So I'm going to uncheck this context sensitive and look for something that only says possess. 
So I'll connect the execution pin from the spawn actor AC of bear to possess, and the return value has to be connected to the in pawn. And our target will be our local ACF player controller because we're setting a new player controller or ACF player controller with this new spawned actor. And now we can add some special effects such as we can play a sound at location and I can do something like um, I'll look for a royalty free bear roar real quick. So I'm just going to import some bear roar sound from Pixel Bay. It kind of sounds like the one from World of Warcraft. So I think that's kind of nice. So it's just called Bear Roar. So I'll go back, play the sound called Bear Roar, and it'll play at the location. And then I also want to do something like um, maybe spawn an emitter just to make it look kind of nice. I don't really have any special effects, I think, that I have in this project because it is a brand new project. But I can look for maybe some sort of smoke. I'll just try this out. I don't know what this looks like. But this pretty much covers our character unequipping, getting destroyed, spawning a new actor, possessing the bear, and then it plays the special effects so it looks like we transform. It may not look <laughs> the, like the greatest transformation, but let's go ahead and try it out. Oh wait, actually, I need to set um, how to transform via some sort of control. So I'm going to go to event graph, and then what I want to do is let's do a debug key, and I'll do one in this case. Actually, I'll do two because that was my wow key bind. Debug key two, and I'm just going to click the shift modifier to toggle on so we have to hold shift and click to in order for this to happen so when pressed we're just going to drag out this shapeshift to bear function and this function will take plus take place when we click shift two so i compile and save click play i want to full screen it click play and then when i hit shift shift two i just become a bear and it plays that roar sound and the smoke is there for some reason so let me get rid of that smoke it's not going away Oh, and to spawn the emitter properly, don't forget to get the actor location. So for the sound location, I'm also going to do the same thing. So I'll get the actor location. I'll click context sensitive, get actor location, and I'll plug in the return value for this location and this location. And I need to play a, I guess, a shorter, I'll do this impact. So now when I go ahead and hit play, let me delete this guy, the enemy. So now when I hit shift two, it plays the animation and my roar sound. I can attack and so on, but I have no way of going back to becoming my ACF ultimate player BP. So now in my ACF bear, I just need to replicate that function. So in order to do that, I'm just going to go over to the functions tab in my ACF bear, click on this plus sign and call this shape shift to human. And in this case, since items aren't already showing, I'm just going to destroy the character, set the lifespan to something like 0.01. And then I want to spawn actor from class and in this case the class will be the acf ultimate player bp and then for the spawn transform i'm just going to get actor transform and i want to add that possess node again because we're going to repossess into our main character so i'll drag this execution pin out return value will be pawn and the target will be get local acf player character controller and you can add your sound and emitter special effects and so on but in this case i'll just leave it as this and now back in my event graph, I want to add a debug key and I'll do two again and use that shift modifier. So when I do that, when I click shift two again, I can just revert back into a human as if I'm undoing it. So now I'm just going to click shift two, become a bear. And now I can play as a bear and so on. And then I will click shift two again and I'll turn back into my character and I can play as my character and then shift two. It's a little OP because there's no cooldown. No animations either, so you can just instantly start attacking up as a bear. And yeah. And you can do this with as many animals as you want. Shape shift into whatever you want and so on. Thanks for watching. Code is real. Like, subscribe, comment below what you want to see next. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.